And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Storytelling, which has a huge box, unnecessary of course, and also kind of an odd name. I mean, I guess it's storytelling, although the game itself, while storytelling is part of the game, the game is more of a memory style game. But hey, whatever. This uh, game includes classic tales as uh, The Three Little Pigs, and the Hare and the Tortoise, and Cinderella, and St. George and the Dragon. All of those are in here. Let's see how the game plays. The first thing you do is you pick which story you're telling. There's four stories that come with the box. Each has a set of tiles and each has a set of story cards that go with those tiles. So we'll, for this one we'll pick St. George and the Dragon. You'll shuffle the 16 tiles. The story ones are placed in order from 1 to 13. One person's chosen to go first. The person next to them will read to them. That person, like for example here, a long time ago there was a town with a castle that was terrorized by a dragon whose stinky breath poisoned the air. They're looking at the back of the card, so they're looking for time. So like, is this time? Nope. Turnover. We put this card aside. We go to the next part of the story. It's the next person's turn. The first card they need to find is the town. Nope. Not the town. Then the next person goes. First thing they need to find is the person. So they turn this one over. Not person, but there's time. And so eventually, as time goes by, this person has it again, and maybe this card comes up. Oh, time. So they turn that over. Now they need to find town. So they look for time. No, that's chance. And so they're, what they have to do to win the card, you have to turn over all of them in order. So there's the town. So then the next time this card comes up, uh, we'll start with time, and then town, and then castle. Nope, not castle. Hey, but there's the person. But as you're flipping these over, eventually you will discover where all of them are and hopefully you'll be able to turn them all over in a row. When you do that, you will get to keep the card, which is worth this many points at the end of the game. The game will continue. You read a card to the person, they try to get the things. If they don't get it, you put it aside, go to the next one. When you get to the last card, you take all the cards set aside, go through them again, and you keep going till there's only three cards not taken. When that happens, when 10 cards are gone out of the 13, everyone simply adds their points together, and whoever has the most points is the winner. Now, there are various um, ways that you can change each game. This one here, when there's a Dragon Breath card, then you can, the, you can play an advanced way that it moves it with the three little pigs. When the wolf blows shows, they can all move in one direction. With Cinderella, there's a clock going around the outside. Each player has to decide at some point during the game when they're going to just cut and basically retire for the evening. And if the clock reaches all the way around the whole thing, uh, any player who hasn't retired automatically loses. And then for the hare and the tortoise, you actually will have the hare and the tortoise going around like a, a racetrack around the outside. Every time someone makes a mistake, the hare goes forward one. But anytime someone gets one correct, the tortoise goes forward two. And it's a kind of a cooperative game to get the tortoise there first or the hare. But usually, if you're just playing the basic game, most points is the winner. Now, obviously, this is a game for kids, right? Some of you are probably watching that going, oh, I wouldn't want to play it. Right, this is a game for children. But for children, I think it really works well. There's four different stories which they like, and trying to get things in order works, especially since the game doesn't re keep repeating the same card over and over again. So you're like, okay, I need to find that, that, that. Okay, boom, 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 boom. It's almost like a physical board game version of Simon, for example. Okay, I need to do this, 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 and then this. And I like that part of the game because it keeps you thinking. You're saying, okay, I need to turn that over. This is where. And as kids go by, they'll figure it out. And if they get good at the game, then you can add in those things where the wolves and the pigs are shaking things up or the clock or the, the hare and the tortoise, although it's really hard for the tortoise to win and the hare and the tortoise, just so you know. So be prepared for kids to be unhappy about losing a cooperative game. But it does work, and because it's essentially the same game, but with four different stories, it doesn't get that boring. This is kind of the game where you, as an adult, could facilitate the whole game. You don't actually have to play it. You can be like, hey, I'll just read the story cards. And that will help you not get humiliated by the kids. <clears throat> 
Not that I've heard of anyone happening to anybody. So I like this. Again, I, the box is really too big for this game. There's just too much going on. And I do think the name is misleading, but it does provide some good classic fairy tale type stories. And it lets kids use memory in a way that's slightly different than memory has been done before. The artwork is cute and fun for kids. They'll like the stories. It will teach them some things about points. And that's mostly memory though. And that's the gist of it. There's uh, The cards are multiple languages, but um, I basically, they, they came with two sets of cards. I got rid of the, the set that didn't have English on them. And these have two on them with English. And it's pretty easy. But it is, the story is almost not even necessary. Just the pictures. And that's the order you're supposed to do them in. And you may find yourself the third time you're going through cards just saying, all right, do this card. <laughs> Making the storytelling a bit of a sideline. But for kids, especially younger kids, I think this one would be a big hit. Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.